Ah, the Silver State, known for the Comstock Load, gambling, prostitution, and Area 51. Nevada is a state that has a character all its own, but did you know that there is a history of Basque settlers in Nevada? To get a taste of this unique culture, stay tuned as I make Gato Basque on this episode of Sweet Escapes. Basque cake is a cake that's origins can be dated all the way back to about 1830 in Cambo Nabang. The early versions of what we know today are credited to Marianne Hirigoyen. She was a pastry chef from Cambo who sold her cakes in the local markets, and subsequently her cakes became such a success that she was named the Basque Cake Woman. Eventually, she handed down her recipe to her daughters, who continued to sell her cake in their shop, La Patisserie Marianne. Originally in the Basque country, the cake was eaten after Mass on Sunday. However, over time it has become something that you can enjoy for breakfast, or dessert, or maybe even an afternoon snack. What makes Gâteau Basque unique is that it's made with a pastry crust rather than a batter. It is tender, flaky, and crumbly. Now inside the cake you will either find pastry cream, black cherry jam, or even a combination of the two. The original recipe is noted to have had pastry cream, which is what I chose to make today. The original recipe is also protected by the Aguski Association. Not only that, but they are also very strict about preparation methods and have very precise specifications that they require. And so scattered throughout Basque Country, one will find bakeries that are Aguski approved. Having this label confirms that the bakery is preparing the cake using traditional methods. Okay, so I don't have access to the original recipe and I'm also not Aguski approved but I still want to try and make something that could be worthy. So let's get started. To begin, we're going to make the pastry dough. Start with a half a cup or one stick of unsalted butter at room temperature. Cream this until smooth and then add one cup of sugar. Once the butter and sugar are well combined, add two egg yolks, one large egg, and the zest of half an orange. Continue to mix this until well combined. Now for the dry ingredients, you'll need one and a half cups plus two tablespoons of flour. Now I used all purpose flour, but you can also use cake flour. Add one teaspoon of baking powder and three quarters of a teaspoon of salt. And I like to just whisk this just to combine everything. With the mixer on low, gradually add the dry ingredients. Once everything comes together, transfer the dough to a piece of cling film, wrap it and form it into a disc. Now let the dough chill in the refrigerator for a while. And while the dough is chilling, we're going to make the pastry cream. In a bowl, combine three large eggs, one egg yolk, and two thirds a cup of sugar. Whisk until the mixture is a pale yellow color. To this, we're gonna add a quarter cup of cornstarch and also a quarter cup of all-purpose flour and a pinch of salt. And whisk everything until well combined. Now that that's prepared, you can set the egg mixture aside for a moment. Now to a saucepan, we're gonna add two cups of whole milk, two teaspoons of pure vanilla extract, and the zest of the other half of the orange. Place this over medium heat, and once it comes to a simmer, slowly add this to the reserved egg mixture, making sure to whisk the entire time. This is what's called tempering. Once all the milk has been whisked into the egg mixture, we are going to transfer everything back into the saucepan and put it back over medium heat. Whisk the mixture continuously until thickened. Now this is going to take about 5 minutes or so. Now remember, it's very important not to walk away or stop whisking at this step, or you could risk burning your cream. Not exactly tasty. Once thickened, take the pastry cream off the heat and whisk in two tablespoons of butter. This will smooth everything out and also add a little bit more richness to the cream. Transfer it to a clean bowl and place a sheet of cling film directly to the top of the cream. This will prevent a skin from forming. And let this chill for a couple hours in the refrigerator. Alrighty, while our dough and pastry cream are chilling, let's take a trip down memory lane and learn about the Basque history in Nevada. Like many others in the mid-1800s, the gold rush brought many Basques to California to strike it rich. Some came directly from the Basque regions in Europe, while some, who had fled to Argentina to escape civil war in the 1830s, made their way up north when news of the gold strike reached them in 1848. However, once they were in California, reality set in, and just like many others who were looking to make their fortune, finding gold was easier said than done. They found that in order to adapt, they had to find other means of earning a living, and many who had immigrated from South America had experience in livestock and set up operations in California. But just a short time later, in 1859, silver was discovered on the Comstock, and that drew many eastward to Nevada. Now, also because of the population boom in California, the price of land got higher, and by the 1860s, many of the Basque had to move their operations to more, well, undervalued land, and that brought them to the Great Basin in Nevada. 
the large-scale livestock and sheep herding operations that were beginning to establish themselves in Nevada, well, they eventually started attracting a large number of Basques from the old country. In 1890, a large number of Basques arrived in Nevada, along with other groups from Southern and Eastern Europe. Now you would think it was gold and silver that drew them here, but in fact, it was the opportunity for a steady employment and the comfort of being around their fellow man. It wasn't an easy journey as the voyage over was a long one. Along with that, they also faced a language barrier and had very little, if any, knowledge of sheep herding. But despite these challenges, the Basque proved to be hardworking and smart. And because of this, they gained respect and established a solid community in Nevada. But in the coming years, with World War I, World War II, and the Spanish Civil War, the manpower needed for the sheep industry in Nevada was in short supply, mainly because most of the Basques were serving in all three wars. World War II was the last major migration of Basques to the United States, and by the 1970s, the sheep industry wasn't as prominent as it had been in the past. However, the culture remains strong in Nevada, and you can find many delicious restaurants that still serve up traditional foods that will give you a taste of a culture that flourished so far away from home. And on that note, let's finish up our cake. Once the dough has chilled thoroughly, take it out and let it sit for about five to 10 minutes just to soften it up a tiny bit. Take about two thirds of the dough and roll it out as you would a pie dough, keeping it as round as possible and making sure to flour your board when needed to prevent the dough from sticking. Transfer the dough to a greased pan that has been lined with parchment. I use a nine inch cake pan, but you could also use a spring form pan or even a tart pan. Cover the bottom and sides evenly. Now this dough is very soft, but it's also very forgiving. So if it breaks on you, just patch it right up. Once you have lined your pan, spread the cooled pastry cream evenly inside the shell. Now the one I was making, there was a bit of an overhang. So as you can see, I just folded that over on top of the pastry cream. Take the other third of the dough and roll it into a nine inch disc. This will cover the top and seal in the filling. Now make an egg wash with one egg and one tablespoon of water and brush the top of the cake. Now take a fork and without pressing too hard, create a crosshatch pattern. Put the cake into a cold oven and then turn the temperature to 325 degrees Fahrenheit and bake for approximately an hour or until golden brown. Now we're starting in a cold oven so that the filling doesn't get overcooked. Once the cake is done, let it cool to room temperature before cutting and enjoying. Here's the cake and as you can see the dough has a beautiful golden brown color and you can see that crosshatch pattern on top. So let's give it a try. Mmm. I'm going to take a bite. The pastry is tender and it's flaky and the pastry cream inside it is rich and has a really just a bright orange flavor to it not bad for not being a goose cake approved wouldn't you say well if you approve of my cake then please hit that like button or even better subscribe to my channel and join me next time on sweet escapes now i think i'll make myself a cup of tea and enjoy the rest of my cake see you guys next time